looking at the impacts of climate change on our cities. Now, the past few weeks have demonstrated that our planet is in crisis, with extreme weather events affecting countries around the world. Now, last week, Storm Ida caused devastation in parts of the United States, including flash flooding in New York. Now, Jerome, that's where you are now, and I understand that New York subway flooded three times this summer. I mean, that's evidence that America's just not equipped to, to deal with extreme weather events, is it? So. You're a White House advisor. What are you telling President Biden to do about it? Absolutely. This is a, a clear example of how America doesn't have enough investment in infrastructure to protect us from the climate crisis. In the short term answer to make sure that we are, are, are not long term impacted by Hurricane Irma is to get immediate assistance to those that are impacted. The long term answer is to create a civilian climate core in America to employ people that will go door to door and make sure people have access to um, climate justice um, resources and make sure that they're able to, to be rescued and, and employed after this. So there's so many things we, we need to do, but not enough is being done right now. And what about the UK, Mariam? I'm actually going to take a look at something that the Climate Change Committee said in a report uh, this year. They're advisors to the government, of course. Uh, they have said the UK doesn't yet have a vision for successful adaptation to climate change. So, Mariam, it looks like we're not terribly well prepared here either. What, what do you think? Absolutely. I mean, in that report, they looked at 34 priority areas, I believe, and we haven't made significant progress on any of them. And so I think that adaptation is not something that, you know, people who are not immersed in the climate conversation every day maybe have thought about, but it is something that our governments have known we need to do. And action has been, has been short, you know, has been slow and now might be too late for some people. Well, yes. And Jerome, why do you think this is? I've noticed that there have been calls this week to make sure that adaptation, that is things like building flood defences and, and adapting to a changing climate, should have equal priority at COP26, at the UN Climate Summit. Um, at the moment, there's been a lot of talk about getting emissions down, but do you think that that's come at the expense of a focus on adaptation? Well, I think that the conversation should be both and. It should be one focusing on future emissions, but also making sure that we're holding them accountable by seeing real investment year over year. We need to make sure that every, every year we're seeing actual tangible change and not pretty words that often fall empty in communities like how we're seeing in, in New York City right now are reeling from because of the empty promises that happened in the 2010s. So transparency and holding people to account. Uh, Mariam, also, is there an issue of, of money here? There's only a finite, am finite amount of money and governments around the world have spent billions uh, trying to mitigate against, against, uh, mitigate against COVID. And is there a risk that if you spend loads of money on adaptation, it takes money away from some of those future technologies, ways of, of trying to get emissions down? I mean, I, I agree with Jerome, and this is a both and. You're not going to be able to solve this problem if you only look at adaptation or you only look at reduction in emissions. And there are some solutions that amazingly will help us do both. So I think there's some real space here to be, you know, innovative and to think about things like, you know, insulating our homes helps protect us against extreme weather, but it also helps reduce our energy consumption. And these things can be really effective. Uh, and Jerome, I'm just really interested to think to hear what you think about public opinion in the States. There've been, it's been a, a terrible summer for America in terms of heat waves, wildfires, floods. Do you think that's changing people's minds on climate change? Um, well, even though I am a White House advisor, I was a climate activist beforehand. I climate strike for over 100 weeks in front of the White House. And I understand that right now, the awareness is not there. The American media is, is sadly not like Sky News, where you guys break down the climate crisis. Our news is very much just talking about the hurricane, but not talking about the underlying issue that is the climate crisis. So I think that even though we have seen a rise in, in so much natural disasters from California to Florida to Louisiana and now New York City, people are not tying them together and understanding the broader system of climate change that is continuing to destabilize our communities.